Okay, um, so this is joint work with a PhD student, Alec Johnson at Northwestern, uh, Dennis Nikopelov, who's an econometrics professor at UVA, uh, and Ono Zuder, who is the head of machine learning at Booking.com. Uh, we uh, began talking about this work three summers ago when uh, Alec and Dennis and I had the good fortune to spend two months at Booking. Uh, talking with them very closely about how to better design mechanisms that they had. Um, cool. So this paper is about dashboard mechanisms for <laughs> online marketplaces. Uh, in the first couple of slides, I hope to make clear what that means. Um, in the background of this uh, title slide, you can see an example of what I mean by a bidding dashboard. This shows uh, as you, uh, if you're a hotel on booking.com, as you change the amount of commission you might pay, uh, how you can expect to see uh, the uh, number of clicks on your ho hotel increase in terms of so your visibility increase. Okay, and so this gives some guidance to the hotel about how they might think about optimizing their bids in the auction place, in the, in the marketplace. Okay, um, so I want to think about uh, sort of generally how we might think about designing uh, mechanisms for online marketplaces. And so here are some basic assumptions that uh, I want to focus on for designing mechanisms. And uh, in these marketplaces, I have short-lived users uh, that are matched with long-lived agents. Okay, these agents are like the advertisers in ad auctions. Um, they're like the hotels in booking.com. They're like the sellers on eBay. And the users are the other side of the market. Okay, um, there's some matching algorithm that the marketplace produces that prioritizes some agents over other agents, and then the users show up and they weigh whatever their utility functions are, make trade-offs, and choose some um, uh, agents to match with. Uh, and this matching algorithm sort of results in some sort of endogenous allocation rule based on some engineering concerns that were made by um, the platform. Okay. Um, many of these marketplaces have exogenously given payment formats. Um, the, my two favorite uh, payment formats are the winner pays bid format, which we just heard about was for ad exchanges, uh, for example. Um, and this to me corresponds to a, a typical per unit pricing model. Um, you you want to specify how much you want to pay per unit, and that's what you end up paying. Uh, and the other exogenous payment model that I like a lot is the all pay model which uh, corresponds to the subscription model, which is you pay some amount per pay period, and you get stuff, and then the next peri period you pay a different amount, and you pay a different amount of stuff. That's sort of the all pay uh, model. Okay, um, there is um, a basic challenge in uh, non-truthful mechanism design, which is what we're talking about here, uh, and that is, uh, the agent strategies are non-trivial, so if you're an agent in one of these complex, non-truthful marketplaces trying to figure out how you should be bidding is actually not the most transparent thing to figure out. Um, and another problem uh, which uh, people in the theory community of uh, the EC conference um, have been thinking a lot about, which is the price of anarchy question, is that these auctions tend to have equilibria that are actually pretty bad. Um, one of my favorite results in this paper is a lower bound by Duddy and Kesselheim showing that for single blinded common control auctions, you should not expect something better than a square root M approximation for winner pays bid style auctions. And square root of M is a really bad approximation. Okay, so those are my basic challenge. Uh, the solution I'm going to propose today is bidding dashboards, uh, which will help us solve both of these uh, problems. And bidding dashboards, just think of them as estimates of your price quantity curve for each bidder. So we're going to forecast what we think a bidder might get as a function of what they bid. Okay? Um, if I give the bidders a dashboard, hey, bidders can easily optimize now for this dashboard. Okay? Um, and now my mechanism design problem is let's try to think about how we should design a mechanism that's aware that there is this dashboard that bidders are responding to. And so what are the things that we think about when we're designing mechanisms in that space? Okay? So this is what I think about online marketplaces. Uh, uh, obvious uh, key questions here. What dashboard should you publish? 
uh, and what mechanism should you run that's going to be aware of this dashboard. Okay, so um, I'm just going to tell you sort of informally the dashboard mechanism that I want to think about. Okay, so informally, a dashboard mechanism for a dashboard that you have in mind, and we'll, work about, we'll talk about that later, uh, and some allocation algorithm that your engineers have given you, which say how to match agents to <laughs> where they go in the marketplace, et cetera, um, is going to work like this. We're going to publish the dashboard for each player. Uh, we're going to then solicit bids. We're going to then assume that these bids are best responses to the dashboard, which means we can back out which are the, what are the values or preferences that the agents might have that drove these bids. We're then going to just execute the algorithm on the values that we backed out, the true values that the agent should have if they did indeed optimize for this dashboard. Uh, and I'm going to charge the winners their bids in the winner pays bid format. In the all pay format, I'm going to charge everybody their bids. Um, for this talk, I'm going to focus on winner pays bids only. Okay, um, so here's the main question. Uh, this seems wrong. Uh, and so really what I want to do today is actually answer the question is, well, for what dashboards, which I left as a variable in my construction, for what dashboards is this approach a good, correct approach? Okay, so here's the eventual theorem I, I'm going to get to uh, at the end of this talk. Uh, and the theorem is there exists a dashboard such that if we are in this sort of agents interacting repeatedly, long lived in this kind of a mechanism, uh, the sequential dashboard mechanism is approximately strategically equivalent to the sequential truthful mechanism with the same allocation algorithm. Okay? In, and in particular, uh, and what I mean by um, approximate strategically equivalent is that any sort of equilibrium you find or approximate equilibrium you find in a sequential truthful mechanism, there's a corresponding approximate equilibrium in the dashboard mechanism and vice versa. So you can go from equilibrium in one to the other back and forth and they have the same properties. Okay? And in particular, um, the truthful bidding strategy we like in a sequential truthful mechanism corresponds exactly to the follow the dashboard strategy in the dashboard mechanism. And the follow the dashboard strategy is, given your value in any round, bid the best bid for the dashboard. Okay, so assume the dashboard is right and bid appropriately. Cool. So that's basically what I want to be telling you guys about today. Okay, so here's some, um, my background is theory. Here's some theoretical context of why I think this kind of question is especially interesting from a theory angle. I also think it's really interesting from a practical angle because the solution we're going to give is actually quite a practical solution. Um, so mechanism design says, uh, let's identify a mechanism that has a good equilibrium. Uh, the revelation principle is sort of the starting place for 99.99% uh, of mechanism design. And it says if, a, if there exists a good mechanism with a good equilibrium, then there exists a mechanism with a good truth-telling <laughs> equilibrium. And for that reason, this search for good mechanisms has focused really on the search for good truthful mechanisms. Okay? There are two issues with this. And if you look out in the real world, 99.99% uh, .99 of mechanisms are not truthful. Uh, and um, the theory that you get from studying truthful mechanisms doesn't actually translate back out and give you good answers to designing non-truthful mechanisms. And we actually don't have a really good framework for designing non-truthful mechanisms from scratch. So somehow this revelation principle has pushed us in a direction that actually for designing practical mechanisms seems maybe not the best direction to have been pushed. Okay, um, so I propose this as a basic challenge um, which we're going to address for online marketplaces. And the basic challenge is un methods for identifying methods for undoing the revelation principle in domains of interest. Okay. Um, I want to focus on, uh, a st uh, start out with one particular scenario where actually it's pretty easy to undo the revelation principle. And that's when you have a single agent. Okay, when you have a single agent undoing the revelation principle is super easy. 
Okay, so the usual uh, theorem of Meyerson characterizing incentive compatibility says a single agent mechanism X is the allocation rule, P is the payment rule, is incentive compatible if and only if the allocation rule for this agent is monotone in their value, and the payment rule is given by the familiar form here, which I have some pictures for. So the payment is the surplus uh, V times X uh, minus the integral uh, under the allocation rule, uh, which is actually the player's utility. Um, and that uh, difference between those is the payment, which is the area above the curve, and most people in this room, I think, are familiar with this picture. Okay, um, there's also another term, which is P0, which is the payment made by a player with no value. Uh, usually, uh, that payment is zero, and I've illustrated a zero here. Um, cool, so what if we wanted to design a winner pays bid mechanism that in equilibrium, uh, there's no equilibrium, it's because there's one player, but the best response gives me this rule and it's a winner pays bid uh, mechanism for one agent. Okay, so I'd like to define X tilde. In my talk, tildes are gonna be for bids and not tildes are gonna be for values. So I'm gonna define X tilde, which is the bid allocation rule, and here's how you do it. Well, in a first price mechanism, you pay your bid when you win. Well, if the, it's gonna satisfy the payment identity, then it better be my bid is equal to my payment from the payment identity divided by my allocation probability. It's the only thing that works out. And so that's just this formula where I took my payment identity and divided through. And something I would love you to remember for a few slides is the fact that if I happen to have this uh, payment of the zero type being non being non-zero, then it's going to come here with divided by the allocation rule. Remember that for a few slides. Okay. Um, and then what's my bid allocation rule? Well, this was my rule for mapping values to bids. And so I can just invert that and put that into my original allocation rule. I get my bid allocation rule. Okay, so if I write this bid allocation rule, the best strategy to the player is to actually bid from this bid strategy I just wrote down. And then we implement the allocation rule I tried to implement. Cool, so if with one agent it's easy. Um, it turns out undoing multiple agents is actually really, really hard. Okay, so I encourage everyone to try to spend time thinking about this, it's really hard. Um, so we're gonna find an easy way out in this talk. Okay, um, just to briefly look at my model, um, I'm in a dynamic iterated model, so I'll have stages S from one to T. I'll have uh, an N agent valuation profile in each stage. It could be different in each different stages. Um, and I'll have a stochastic allocation algorithm which maps the uh, values of players to uh, probabilities of winning. Um, and that could be different in each stages. I'll have linear utility, which is just the sum of your utility in each stage uh, uh, summed. Okay, I'm gonna fix winner pays bid. Um, and one thing I'm gonna love to get, which I'm not gonna have time for in this talk really, is I'd love to get a single call implementation. Meaning, I'd love a mechanism that only is, that's only interface with the allocation rule is just calling it and implementing that outcome. Okay, that's what I'd love. Okay, in the static model, all these things are the same in every round. <coughs> cool, so my goal is a winner pays bid mechanism to single call implement uh, these uh, allocation rules in every stage. So here are um, the main ideas that go into uh, what we did in this paper. And actually, they're pretty straightforward once you have the idea to try to do this. Okay, so um, first off, I'm gonna look empirically in the past and see what my empirical allocation rule is, and that's what I'm gonna publish to the players. That kind of makes sense. If I wanna get close to being people doing what I want them to do, just publishing what's as close as possible to the truth is a good idea. Okay, I am gonna infer agents' values from their response to the dashboard, as I said before. Um, and then the simple observation is, if you're in steady state, then your empirical allocation rule is correct, and then everything's in Nash equilibrium. Okay, so actually in steady state, everything is very happy. Okay, the big challenge will be what happens if we're not in steady state, like what happens in stage one? Or what happens when things change? 
So what we're going to do is we're going to look at how the payments are actually incorrect. If we publish a dashboard, then the actual payment we might charge might not be the right payment. Okay, if it's incorrect, let's write down that difference, add it to a balance that we keep track of, and in the future, we'll have the players pay off this balance. How do I do that? I add it to P0, the payment that you pay, pay uh, the zero type pays. Okay, and I can always add a payment to P0. Uh, for one round, it violates IR, but for, could violate IR, uh, but for multiple rounds, the violation of IR will balance out, and it's actually in the strategy of the best interest of the players to continue playing. Okay, uh, and in this, uh, with this uh, payment rebalancing dashboard, uh, we're going to get approximate strategic equivalents for dynamic settings. Okay, so as if values are changing or if the allocation rule is changing, uh, that'll just get taken care of by my rebalancing of the, of, of the, you know, taking care of incorrect payments and everything's will be fine. Uh, if things settle down and people have the same values, we're doing the same allocation rule, then there's no rebalancing to do. And we're just gonna be in Nash equilibrium right away without any P0 term. Okay, um, and I said I wanted to get this sort of single call implementation. Uh, and so it's actually gonna be super straightforward to reduce this directly to a really excellent paper by um, Moshe, Bobby, and Alex, uh, where they defined the implicit, implicit payment mechanism, which showed that you can do this for truthful mechanisms. And essentially what, this what our paper is going to be is a reduction to a truthful mechanism. If you can do it for truthful mechanisms, you can do it with dashboards. Okay, so we can get this single call implementation for, um, <coughs> for a dashboard. Cool. All right, so that's basically uh, what our goal is. Um, here's formally uh, what I mean by dashboards. So dashboards are allocation rules mapping each player's bid to what we think they're gonna get. Um, here's formally what my dashboard mechanism is. Uh, the dashboard mechanism, which is a bid allocation rule mapping profiles of bids to outcomes um, for some profile of individual agent bat dashboards solicit bids. It inverts the bids using the bid function that corresponds to the dashboard. Uh, and then it calls the original allocation rule on the values that it gets and uses payments from the first price rule. Cool. Um, So it's, this theorem is actually a fairly straightforward theorem to see. If the dashboard is right, meaning we're in a static setting, we decided to follow the dashboard and the, then the dashboard is right in the next round, the dashboard is right and every, all the payments are right and everything is happy and so we're in Nash equilibrium. I'm gonna skip the, um, for interest of time, the, dyna the, the, the really interesting question, the dynam dynamic setting and jump to um, some conclusions. Okay, um, so they're bad equilibrium, these single shot mechanisms. Uh, the sequential dashboard mechanism can implement any outcome of the sequential truthful mechanism. So we essentially have a reduction from first price or all pay mechanisms to truthful mechanisms in this dashboard environment. Um, in steady state, the dashboard is correct. We don't do any rebalancing. Um, <coughs> There are a lot of extensions, I think, that uh, take your favorite model and try to get that model working with dashboards. So revenue as an objective, non-monotone allocation algorithms, can you get those fixed uh, in this setting? non many utility like budgets um, and uh, frugal instrumentation, which I can tell you about offline, um, or your favorite question. Um, and my general open question is, I really think we need a much broader theory of non-truthful non mechanism design, which we really don't have right now. Um, and so I encourage you to try working on that question directly. Thank you. <laughs>